This program is being sponsored by the partners and friends of Keith Butler Ministries. Today on Live Your Faith. Love is a motive issue. So what he's talking about is what is your motive for everything? Do you hear the word just so I can get blessed myself? Or do you hear the word so that, yeah, I want to be blessed, but I'm looking for a way to bless somebody else too. Seeking to reach the continents with the word of God. Teaching the Word, doing the work, and touching the world. This is the Live Your Faith broadcast with Bishop Keith Butler. You know, Satan has a way in which he attacks you as a, as a believer. Jesus told us about it in Mark chapter four. He says there are five things that Satan uses to attack the word of God from you when you get it. He uses affliction, persecution, cares of this world or distractions, deceitfulness of riches and lust of other things. And when you learn about what he's doing today in this message, you'll know how to avoid it. Remember 3 John verse two says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Once again, the word prosperous means to succeed. And I wish means, he said, I am praying above all things that you may succeed and be whole or well in body, the word health. But note that even as your soul succeeds or as your soul prospers. And so the prospering of the soul, because you are not a soul, you are a spirit being that has a soul. The soul was the mind, the will, and the very seat, praise God, of the emotions. But you are a tripart being, spirit, soul, and body. We've looked at the body. We looked at the soul somewhat, praise God, on last week. We're going to go a little bit further today. We're going to look at how Satan attacks the soul. Because the ball game is the soul, folks. I mean, the mind, the will, and the emotions, whichever way the tripart being, spirit, soul, and body, Whichever way the soul goes is the way you go. Amen. amen. You have a prosperous soul, amen, then you're going to wind up having a good physical body. Are you listening to me? The soul can listen to the spirit of man. If you're born again, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Well, your spirit is a safe guide, but the soul has to decide to listen to the spirit. So whichever, whichever way the soul goes, it's the way you are going to go. Satan knows this. And so, praise the Lord, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and let's begin and let's see how Satan attacks the soul. Why do we need to know this information? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, to give us some reason as to why. It says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Satan has methodologies and ways and devices so that he can get an advantage over us. But if we know what his devices are, praise the Lord, we can stop him from having that advantage and, praise the Lord, put him in a position in which he's supposed to be in, that is, stay under our feet. Amen. Now turn to Mark chapter 4. Because the Lord Jesus really lays it out for us, and I've looked at this before, but the Lord's given us some additional things about this with how Satan attacks the soul. Can I get three hallelujahs today? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can I get three praise the Lord's please? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus does a extremely important teaching here, Mark chapter 4. He says in verse 13, he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? A parable, of course, is a short story intended to illustrate certain points. Well, he says here, if you don't know this one, if you don't understand this word here, no means understand. If you don't understand this one, you can't understand the rest of them. So that makes this one then the most important one that the Lord Jesus taught. Again, as I oftentimes say, if there's anyone that you ought to know backwards and forward is this one. So he says here, praise God, the point of the parable in verse 14, 
the sower soweth the word. Once again, it's about the word of God. Romans 1.16 says that the word of God is the power of God. That Greek word there, power, is dulemis. New Testament is translated from the Greek, which is why we say Greek words. And Greek is a lot more expressive language than English, more accurate language. Praise God. He said the word of God then is the power or supernatural ability of God unto deliverance. And so if we're going to have any deliverance in any way, shape, form, or fashion, it will come through the word. So he says the sower, and of course God is the sower or planter. God plants the word. How does he do it? He does it by preaching and teaching of the word. You're going to have the word sown into your hearts today. And, praise God, the shovel in which that is used to plant the word is, is our mouth. We can plant the word into our own hearts. He says here, these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, or seed of the word that is thrown to the side of the road. But when they heard the word, Satan came immediately and took away the word that was sown in their hearts. Amen. And so this individual, Satan didn't have to do anything, anything special whatsoever, because this particular person just decided not to receive it in the first place. They heard it. They didn't make any effort whatsoever to receive it or to accept it. Praise the Lord. So Satan just walked off with it. Okay, amen. I mean, you know, it's not enough just to hear the word. You got to make a decision to believe and to receive the word. But then he says in verse 15, or verse 16 rather, and these are they in the same way which are thrown on stony ground or, or stony places, who when they heard the word immediately received it with gladness. Now that word gladness there, I, one, some years ago I looked it up, and it means here that they heard the word and then when they heard it, they got happy about it and then they started to shout. Okay, amen. So they shouted when they heard the word. But they have no root in themselves and so last just for a little while. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Now, there are several things in addition that we need to note here. Praise God. That word was sown. They shouted when they heard it, but they had no root. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. What do you mean by root? Well, turn to keep a finger here because I'm going to be in Mark all day. But turn to Ephesians chapter 3 because, praise the Lord, that root we will find flows throughout all the New Testament. Praise God. We know the word produces faith. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. So anytime the word is put forth, faith comes with the word. If there's any faith present, it's because somebody's heard the word. They're like the water with the wet, I heard somebody say many years ago. You can't have a glass of water and shave off the wet. In other words, they go together. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, in Ephesians chapter 3, the apostle Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus. And he said here, praise the Lord, verse 17, that the anointed one, his anointing, or Christ, may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted, the word rooted there means stable, and grounded. The word grounded means settled, praise God. Stabled and settled in the love of God. So when you talk about the root here, it's talking about the agape love or the God kind of love. So when you go back to Mark chapter 4 and see what Jesus said, he said, now they heard the word all right, and they shouted immediately as soon as they heard it. Oh, that word was good, and they began to shout that day. But they didn't have any love working with it. No root in themselves. Now, Galatians 5, 6 says, faith worketh by love. Faith is a product of the word. The word worketh, in ergo there, means what? It means it's made active, it's made efficient by the love of God. Yes. 
In other words, the word is made active because of the love of God. Amen. And it's, it becomes efficient with the ability to work well because the love of God. See, love is a motive issue. Maybe I get an amen from the east side of the auditorium. Love is a motive issue. So what he's talking about is what is your motive for everything? Do you hear the word just so I can get blessed myself? Or do you hear the word so that, yeah, I want to be blessed, but I'm looking for a way to bless somebody else too. Everything I set my faith and believe for, praise God. My first basis for believing God is not so that I can get, but that's so that I can give. Amen. Amen. Romans 5.5 5 says that the love of God, same love, is shed abroad or poured out in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given us. So all of us have the ability to operate in the love of God. If you are born again, let me see your hands again. If you are born again, you have the God kind, the God quality of love inside you right now. It would pour it out into your spirit, man, when you were born again. It's in there now. And that love allows you to forgive anybody regardless to whatever they have done. Amen. Amen. After all, you got to do that because Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, when you pray, forgive if you have ought against any. And the word goes on to say, if you will not forgive them, neither will I forgive you. I don't know about you. I need forgiveness sometimes. Well, in order to get forgiveness, you got to give forgiveness, and that's the way how everything in the Bible works. Everything in the kingdom of God is about giving and then receiving. Amen. It's not receiving and then giving. It's about giving and then receiving. Can I get three amen, somebody? Amen. That's how everything in the Bible works. That's the principle in the Word of God. It started with God. For God so loved that he gave. God wanted to have lots of children. Amen. So what did he do? He gave his only begotten son. He's the first one to work the principle. Amen. He planted Jesus as the seed into the earth. Glory to God. And today, the word tells us, John 1, 12, as many as has received Jesus. To them gave he the power, right, and privilege to be called sons of God. Amen. Jesus is no longer the only begotten son of God. He's now the firstborn of many brethren. I don't know about uh, that word many means some number. I don't know what number brother and I am, but I'm one of them numbers. Anybody else one of them brothers, sisters? Praise God. God's still collecting. Every day, and there will be some more today, he's still collecting sons and daughters because he first gave. So in Mark chapter 4, we will again learn something about these people who heard the word. Amen. Praise God. They heard the word. They shouted about it when they heard it but they didn't have any love working in themselves. And so they only lasted but for a little while. And then afterward, when? Because they weren't operating in the love of God, they really became susceptible to two things. The first one here is telipsis. Amen. That's the word affliction. That Greek word telipsis means pressure, Trouble, tribulation. Now, Satan will pressure your soul, pressure you whether you have the word or not. In fact, he will pressure you because of the word. Amen. But there's a big difference when you are operating in the love of God and you can operate in the faith of God later on. I'll talk about that in the message. Praise the Lord. But he said when affliction or when pressure came or when trouble came, or when tribulation arose for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Now, this is really important. You only find this word, Greek word affliction only one at a time in the New Testament, praise the Lord. And a lot of people have the misconception about this whole area of, well, I, I love God, I'm walking in the faith of God, I'm walking in, in, in the word of God, and so nothing bad should happen to me. Well, keep a finger here and turn to Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Are we not talking about afflictions? Yeah. Many, how many? Many. Many is many. Right. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous. It's because they are in right standing with God. Amen. Satan wants to damage you. Okay? So he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. So he didn't say that trouble didn't come. He didn't say that pressure didn't come. He didn't say that tribulation didn't come. He just said, praise God, the Lord I caused you to beat it. But that does mean then that you got to deal with it. So you might as well stop the crocodile tears. And, I don't know why this is happening to me. Satan hates your gut. He hates your guts. You're a word man. You're a word woman. Praise God, it's all about the word for the word's sake because you carry the word as far as Satan's concerned. You are a contaminant and you will contaminate anybody you get, in, get involved in. In fact, God intends for you to be contaminating. He expects you to spread all over men and women everywhere with the word of God, how God loves them and they get saved. Shout amen, somebody. And so Satan wants to stamp you out and he wants to, one, afflict your soul this way. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Amen. This answers a lot of questions because, amen, when I get too offended, praise the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're going to take a look at verse 11 over there. It reads as follows, praise the Lord. Paul said, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. See, these varying different places everywhere he went. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. He said, out of them all. Out of them all. What does all mean? How much is left after all? The Lord delivered me. But everywhere he went, because he was a carrier of the word, everywhere he went, trouble came his way. I remember many years ago at this church, someone came up to me one of, them, one of them Sunday mornings after service as I'm talking to people at the front of the church, and somebody came up to me and said, you know, I didn't have no trouble until I started coming to this church. And I explained to them what I'm explaining here. Yeah, you, can, you, you got some word now. And what, what are you doing with it? Yeah, I'm witnessing everything I see. That's the reason. Now, don't be upset because it's coming your way. Let's get on the word of God. God will deliver you through each one. And every time he delivers you through that one, you'll have a testimony to tell somebody else about it. So you come to the place where the devil said, I just better lead them along because every time I mess with them, they not only get delivered, then they get worse. They spread it. And tell everybody about the goodness of God because he is so amazing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Well, so then, praise God. Let's go back to that Mark chapter 4 because it's all about the word. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. So they have no root, not operating in the love of God themselves. They last for a little while. But when trouble came, when pressure came, amen. So now we understand, praise the Lord, that God didn't promise you that he didn't say you, you wouldn't have any trouble coming your way. In fact, if you live long enough, you're going to have some tribulation come your way. You haven't had any, you must be two months old. <laughs> amen. Or persecution. Now, the word persecution is found five other times also here in the scripture. Praise God. And this word is diogmos. It means to follow after. It means to pursue. So what he said here was, afterward, when, of course, pressure and trouble came, or being followed after, or being pursued, for the word's sake, let me show you some of the other places where you'll find this. 
Turn to Acts chapter 8, for example. I'll give you a couple of them. You only find this, of course, six times, this Greek word in the New Testament. But in Acts chapter 8, verse 1, it reads, And Saul was consenting unto Stephen's death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. Well, praise God. Guess what happened? They were, they were scattered abroad. They were pursued. Stephen was stoned. Paul was there. He was in Saul. And then they began to pursue the church, and that's why they were scattered. Amen. Now, it wasn't the will of God that it happened that way because they opened the door to it through disobedience. They got out from under the full protection of God because of disobedience. Amen. And so they wound up being scattered everywhere, being pursued. Well, Satan comes against your mind with trouble, comes against your mind with pressure. The difference really between, praise God, affliction and persecution is that the affliction deals with circumstances. The persecution deals with people. Amen. And Satan loves to have a combination of that. People pursuing you for no reason. And pressure because of situations. Now, once again, it said that Satan does this. He does it because of the word, and he sends people to pursue you. That's what he did, did here. In fact, in Acts chapter 13, we'll take a look at another one over there. Acts 13, 50, it says, But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable men and the chief men of the city and raised perse persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of the coast. Amen. And so I know I was uh, 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 in Greece last year. I was in Greece. And I was going through the areas where Paul walked. And read where, reading the word as I'm looking at this terrain. And, and, you know, as I'm looking at the terrain, I'm going, you mean tell me this guy walked this terrain? I mean, this, this stuff, wow. Wow. They didn't have cars. They didn't have helicopters. They didn't have airplanes. They didn't have modern mode of transportation. They had to use a donkey. And this terrain is awful. I mean, it is terrible to walk. Not only that, praise the Lord, not only that, but Paul had to deal with people on the road who were robbers who would rob you and kill you and take your goods. And then if that wasn't bad enough, he was pursued everywhere he went by what they was called Judaizers or Jews who were zealous against Paul to kill him. And so he had perils of, or dangers from robbers on the road. He had these people persecuting or pursuing him as he went from one city to the next, preaching the word of God, amen, he leave that city and they pursue him some more, trying to catch up to him and stop him, amen. Well, all this time, this stuff was, stuff was intended by the enemy to have an effect upon Paul's soul, Paul's psyche. Yeah, amen. But here, praise the Lord, I'm going to read Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, you, you'll hear what Paul says about it in verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of the anointed one? Shall tribulation? No. Or distress? Uh-uh. Persecution? Forget it. Famine? No. Nakedness or danger or sword? No. As it is written, he's, he's referring to an Old Testament text in, in Psalm, Psalm 44. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. Amen. Amen. As it is written, we are accounted and say they were killed. But we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. No. And all these things we are what? We are what? More. More than conquerors through him that loved us. Why? For I am persuaded where? In my mind. I am persuaded that death, nor life, nor angels, nor demon spirits, no, no powers, nothing in the present or nothing in the future, no heart, no depth, no any creature, I don't care who it is, shall be able to separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. The man had made a decision with his mind. Amen. With his soul, he had decided, praise God, I am here regardless to what. And one of the reasons why Satan is able to succeed against the soul of believers is because they haven't made that final decision that way. 
I can remember what some people call, call uh, the faith message, amen, I just call it the word. But I remember what some people call, call the faith message, a lot of people came to it and ran to it when, uh, as that kind of teaching became very popular in the United States 30 years ago, 40 years ago, praise God, and they came running to it because they were trying to get prosperity or health or healing or something else. They were coming to get, but they weren't coming to get Jesus. Make the best decision you could ever make in your life by receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. The Bible says if you'll believe he's raised from the dead, acknowledge him as the Lord of your life, you'll be saved. Pray with me now. Jesus, I do believe you are raised from the dead. I believe you bore my sins for me. Come into my life. I accept you as my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Now my announcer is going to give you a book here called Where Do We Go From Here? Explain what you do now that you've made Jesus Christ your Lord. Please visit KeithButler.org or call the number on the screen so that we can send you this very important booklet called Where Do I Go From Here? It contains a wealth of information that you will need now that you've decided to ask the Lord into your heart and continue your walk with God. Our prayer for you is that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Praise God. The Bible said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And as you can see from our intro, we're ministering in Europe, we're ministering in Africa, many other places, praise God. We're taking the word of God, East Europe, West Europe, praise God. And you know, God wants everyone to hear the word. That happens because people partner with us. They become people who support what we do. And if you want to see the gospel go beyond just your neighborhood, praise God, and go to people around the world with the heart of God, then we want you to pray about being a partner with us here at Keith Butler Ministries. We want to thank you for your prayer support. And remember now, keep fighting the good fight of faith. The lives of many people are being changed dramatically through the works of Keith Butler Ministries. People who have never heard the message of faith preached are hungry for God's word. They're experiencing the manifestation of Holy Ghost power as they dare to take God at his word. How exciting to be a part of this. We invite you to become a partner with Keith Butler Ministries today as we work to fulfill the Lord's mandate to go into all nations and preach the gospel. Your life will be richly blessed as God continues to manifest his blessings in your life. Join today. God's will is for you to live long and prosper, but it's up to you to participate and cooperate with his plan. In this series, you'll learn what God has to say about how you can live a long and prosperous life. Get the entire series starting at $11.99 on MP3, CD, DVD, and MP4. Order today at KeithButler.org or call 1-888-909-9673. Get connected. Check out our live stream, Church Online, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. To get connected, go to keithbutler.org. This program was brought to you by the friends and partners of Keith Butler Ministries.